All right, let's get into it. How to design a distributed message queue. Uh, this is a mid-level system design interview question. It's probably asked at like the, the concepts from this video are probably going to be asked at Google, Facebook, Microsoft, like really anything for like a mid-level position. And we're going to be going into how to solve this question today. So I'm Raymond Jones. I've solved over 800 leak code problems. I've spent the last probably at least a hundred hours reading through four different like types of system design content. Um, Alex shoes V1 and V2. I took notes on all of those and posted them online. The first half of DDIA designing data intensive applications. And I also read like some parts of Stanley Chang's book, maybe half of his book. And this is going to be like the first course of me, like posting all of like the interview prep that I'm doing online and any fun facts. I play video games. I salsa dance and I watch anime. So that's that. And let's get into doing this, right? So what's going to happen during this presentation, all this information is coming almost directly from Alex Xu or Stanley Chang's book, or you know, maybe even like DDIA too. Uh, a lot of people don't like reading, so I'm just making these videos to summarize and dissect my notes live. By the end of this video, you're going to have a strong understanding of probably one of the most important concepts in system design in 2024, which is scalability, right? This is a very key scalability is very, very huge. And this one's like this entire problem is basically like, how do you do scalability? Okay. So before we get into designing what a message queue is like what is like why message queues what are they even used for um system design interviews love asking questions on how tools are implemented right so you'll be asked things like right like you know what is a message queue how does it work um message queues are probably one of the most important tools for like designing scalable systems they send data from one point to another point and an interviewer they can easily ask you like if you say hey i want to use a message queue and then they're going to ask you okay well what is a message queue how is it implemented can you answer questions like that and yeah if you don't have the answer to this you're not getting an offer i'm so sorry but in this job market you kind of have to know you have to know what's happening so that's that what is a message queue? So a message queue is a thing that's going to be sending data from one service to another service. Uh, particularly, it's going to be enabling asynchronous communication. So what is asynchronous communication? Asynchronous communication means that you don't have to wait. Um, it's It means that nothing really has to wait. They just send the message and then they kind of wait for an acknowledge or like a not acknowledge and they can continue working on like the other things that they were going to be doing, right? Uh, the most common example of a synchronous Communication is that you send data, you send data and then you just wait, like the, the system waits until it gets the response. But because of that, like you, you can't actually work on any other things because it's waiting. So yeah, overall, like this improves reliability and scalability. It's yeah, just a pretty neat little old thing. Some examples of this that you're going to hear about, just if you ever, you know, read books on system design, if you ever like watch YouTube videos, they're going to say like RabbitMQ, Kafka, or Amazon SQS. These are going to be like the three like buzzword names. So yeah, you can send data without waiting for responses in a typical synchronous fashion. Event-driven architecture is kind of another word for this where things are driven by events. I actually, honestly, not too certain on like how this works, but, but I mean, it's something I guess for further research, if you want to look at that, uh, want, yeah. So like if you want to send a message and you want it to like never get lost, right. A message queue is going to be a great job for that. If you want to have retry mechanisms, use a me message queue, right? TLDR, like a message queue is data is how data must be sent in most 10 million plus user applications. Right, you, it's a requirement because you don't want data lost and things like that. Uh, typically, if you're sending a Facebook message or whatever, you, so you're going to be using some kind of message queue. All right, so let's talk about the key features of a message queue. Um, they have a like pretty extensive amount of features, uh, according to Alex Xu, and let's just focus on a few of them. So, right, so there's publisher, consumer, uh, publisher, subscriber. Right, so there's point to point. And then there's like a subscriber publisher model where you have, okay, are we only consuming messages once? Are we consuming them many times, right? You can uh, have separate options. Uh, a message queue gives you the option of choosing which one of these do you want. There is long data retention. 
So how long are you going to be storing the messages, right? Are they going to stay there forever? Are they going to stay there for you know X amount of time? So we've talked about the long data retention. Now we're going to be going into the uh, various delivery semantics, right? So you can send a message at most once, at least once, exactly once, right? If you send it at most one time, it's, you know, only like one person's going to get it. Uh, if it's at least once, uh, you at least want it like to arrive. I can't really think of, I guess, any things off the top of my head, but like banking system, a banking system is probably going to want, you know, exactly once where you send a message and it only happens once. No more, no less. Okay. So these are the features of it um, for sending messages. And then we'll go into the next one. Okay. So let's talk about like the core, one of the core, like, you know, each of these features, right? So one is producer consumer, right? So here's like how it works on a, a very high, high level is what I would probably like, is what I'd like to say. So we have a producer, some service, I want to send a message. The message queue accepts that message and then the consumer receives the message, right? This is just that the message queue is going to be uh, holding the data. It's going to be doing the retries, the fails, right? Things like that. And this is overall present preventing a single point of failure because now we have the message right at, um, we have the message one from the producer, but also like at every single point, right? Like the message is traveling. So there is like, there is no single point of failure. The messages are going to be stored here. Right. Which is, yeah, which is nice, right? Cause now we have like two backups. We essentially kind of have like a little backup because the producer is going to most likely have the message depending on the service that you're sending. And then the message queue is going to be having its own storage for these messages. Cool. So then let's talk about like two of the schemas, right? So there is point to point where we only consume it once. When somebody consumes, we say ACK, it sends back ACK. And then now we know like, Hey, okay. Right. On a general level, this is just like how, you know, you would implement point to point. And then we can talk about publisher subscriber, which is that you can add in topics and control group or control groups, consumer groups. And these are going to help you. These are going to allow you to control like who has access to what, what kind of message, right? So, okay. So let's go over the high level design of this application. So we're going to have, right. This is a very high scaled system. So we're gonna have multiple producers, multiple producers are going to want to send a message to some consumer and we're going to have an intermediary layer that is going to act as like a extra uh, layer of defense so that we can not lose data. Um, when this happens, if a server crashes on the producer side, so it's going to send it, um, most likely it's honestly going to be sending it directly to the producer, but you can just have it sent here. Right. And it's going to be talking to some coordinator. That's going to be, that's going to be considering which servers are down, which servers aren't down, which are alive, and then sending it to the one with the lowest load or based off some partition scheme. Right. And then it's going to send it to the servers. Those servers are going to. Uh, we have multiple again, just because if one goes down, like we need to be able to handle the load. Um, and then those are going to have their own data stores, um, based off part, some partitioning scheme, and then we'll pass it to the consumer. So this is the high level design of it. And then just go. Okay. So yeah, what was that diagram, right? Let's, if you're still confused, right? So basically we're going to have like one thing, we have a producer that's going to be sending, or I think four things, right? About we're going to have a producer that's going to be sending the message over to the MQ. The uh, MQ is going to be composed of servers there. Uh, you can also call them brokers. That's okay. Like if you want to use like the, you know, fancy terminology, there's going to be several of them, right? Because we want to handle service load. Uh, one server is not going to be able to handle like a billion requests. Uh, so we split them up Right, 10,000 servers can handle like 10 requests per second. And at the end at this load, we're probably going to want to use sharding partitioning so that we can have the, the message data, like not overloaded on one database, but these servers are going to be connected. It's like some database, right? And then we're going to have a coordinated service. This is what's going to tell us like which servers to actually send things to, um, as you know, I kind of talked about before. And then of course we have the consumers that are going to be like reading the messages that, uh, the servers send. So that is a very high level overview. So I think next we go into deep dives.
right? So one, you know, there's a couple of questions here, right? Like that we could go into actual specifics. So like, how's the data gonna be stored? Are we gonna be using SQL? Are we gonna be using NoSQL? This application is gonna have, you know, a lot of producers, a lot of consumers, a lot of writes, a lot of reads. So that makes it very awkward to use something like SQL or NoSQL. It, it works, I mean, you can do it, of course, but there's like, I mean, just the drawback is probably just implementing this, right? Something that can handle a lot of writes and a lot of reads. A lot of people talk about like SQL is scalable, but not for really write heavy applications, right? Like people say that, oh, you can just use partitioning or you can just sh use sharding for a SQL database. And then you use replicas and like those read replicas, like you can infinitely scale, like, you know, read replicas or whatever, but, but you are going to be capped on writes. It said it is possible, but a lot with just partitioning and probably other things. So one other alternative, if you don't want to do, you know, these two is to use just a write ahead log. It's like just straight up, just sequential disk it. And the access for a sequential disk is pretty fast. I don't know what the speed is like off the metrics. I think, I believe Alex Shu mentions in his book, like directly what the metrics are. And let's see here. Yeah. So, but essentially we can keep track of like the offset and we just go like to wherever that location is. I, I want to say that that might be like login or something, uh, for searching that, that, that memory. And then for random, it's like, O of N, but not too certain. I guess this is something I would have to investigate if I really want to, but essentially like we can just do this and it's pretty fast. So just look up offsets and then like the length of it. And it also the very, very affordable sequential disks as opposed to like an entire SQL database. So that's nice. Cool. So then what's the data table look like? So we're just going to have, you know, a key, a value and just a partition, like ID, the topic offset timestamp size. Yeah. And then there is the option too, right there. There's another, you know, potential thing we can talk about, which is, okay, well, what about batching versus streaming? Should we send messages as soon as they're sent? The benefit of streaming is that there's low latency, right? You get the message as soon as it arrived, or you could do batching where you just store the messages, bundle, 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 let them grow. And then you send all of it at once. And that's just going to let you send out way more information, you know, over a set of time. So you get throughput increase, but you decrease latency. So you got to wait like a couple of seconds, right? Before the thing piles up to the limit. And then you send it. Um, and you know, this kind of idea comes up in other, other actually basically a lot of problems, which is, do you want to batch? Do you want to stream? So we have push and pull. So how do we want, like, how should consumers receive messages exactly? Right. Should this, should this system, should the system have it to where consumers receive the messages once they're pushed or should the consumers tell the service when they want the messages, right? Um, the, there's pros and cons of this. We have the push model, which is like lower latency, lower latency. The cons are that the consumers are going to be, or can be overloaded if the data is too high, the pull model, we can control the rate of message consumption. If it's too low, Consumers can adjust the rates. Uh, so this is going to be overall like better for edge, probably generally better. Probably it depends on like how many messages that you are and like what the kind of case that you're going to talk about, but, but, uh, you're not going to waste any resources or you're not going to, with this one, you won't waste any resources, um, unless you overload it. And if you didn't, you're going to overload it, then just do this one. Yeah. And maybe just do long polling. If you're concerned about like wasting resources. Okay, cool. So how do we make sure that the rep data isn't lost in a system design, a scalable system? So replicas are really nice for that. The leader follower pattern is also really good. A very general, general overview of a leader follower is that you're going to have a leader that you write to, and then you're going to have several followers that are going to be keeping track of the lead. So they're going to, the lead will get written to, and then it's going to send the signal that it wrote to something to other followers. And those followers are going to write into their database. And then when you need to read, if somebody wants to read data, they just go into the replicas for all the followers. And so now you have, you have those, or you do those are read replicas, or what you could do is just 
have them as backup copies if you want. So then when the leader when the leader breaks, when the leader crashes, we just dedicate a new follower as the leader, swap them, and then we just spin up a new a new type of like data server, right? So then data like doesn't get lost whenever hardware inevitably fails. And we can uh, adjust like the sync level of replicas. So this is something that people, I guess, don't really talk about. At least I don't see it on YouTube that much, but that there are sync levels. So like you can have a one-to-one -one sync where, you know, sometimes they'll trail behind or you can have it up to like 20, a hundred, whatever uh, row entries. And you can kind of dic dictate when we're going to just say like, okay, let's just like stop and wait for one of them to catch up. Right. So in this case, right, if if something is trailing 1000 entries behind, we just say, like, hold on, let's just wait and like try to fix this this trailing behind thing because our data is not up to date. And you can even go super you know, serious about this where you just say, oh, well, one is not up to date. So we need to just wait until all of them are caught up. But this is obviously like you're increasing durability, but you're decreasing performance. We have data delivery. So we got like producer sending. So at most once uh, it'll send the data and then it'll delete it. So it's not sent again. At least once producers get to producers wait to get at least one act before they delete the data. And then exactly once, like this is something more difficult to implement. And I don't even know about that, but there probably there's, I'm sure there's like some paper on it and I believe that's it. Is it? Yeah, I believe that's it. So this is, uh, you know, again, Alex shoes and Stanley Chang's like version of how to design a message queue. I think it's just basically like an intro into scalability, honestly. So it's probably just a really good, like first, not maybe not first, but very entry level, you know, type of problem, uh, very good for, for mid-level interviews. And there's a lot of follow-ups you could ask too. I'm sure there's always follow-ups and things like that, but this is good. If you finish this video, I mean, I'm, I think you would have, you understand like a lot more uh, for one, just how to do like basic system design. So. Thanks for watching.